we'll begin this, uh, this press conference. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Texas Freedom Network for the work they do in the state of Texas in a lot of wonderful areas and for, and Texas Freedom Network for uh, calling this press conference uh, and then to apologize to them because I hijacked their press conference. They had, uh, they had this already scheduled and uh, they were gonna talk about support of uh, the ordinance that I had presented to city council and upon which we were gonna vote tomorrow morning. But an amazing thing happened yesterday and that is that those of us who have been working on this ordinance and had gotten to a point where we had a, we had a sticking point, we couldn't figure out a way around it, and so we just said, all right, we're just gonna go forward. Uh, sometimes it happens, the inspiration strikes, and uh, we figured out a way to reconcile a lot of the concerns around the ordinance. Every major city in America, except the city of Houston has a comprehensive ordinance that prohibits discrimination uh, among a number of different classes or groups of individuals and provides for local remedies to those individuals, uh, except Houston. We all understand that there are federal protections for many named groups, but there is a reason that every other major city in the United States has a local ordinance as well, and that is that it is an expression of local commitment to non-discrimination, and it provides local remedies that don't require uh, literally making a federal case out of it. And so when I started, this process, and you know, uh, you know, I announced in my uh, inaugural speech back in January that uh, we were we were going to proceed. I talked about it in my state of the city. Each step of the way, I've been having conversations with folks. I actually thought that what we would be doing would be taking the existing city of Houston ordinance and adding the gay and transgender communities to that ordinance. And I was shocked to discover that, in fact, Houston didn't have an ordinance, that we were unique among uh, major American cities. And then I began to hear from lots of folks who said, we don't have a local ordinance, and we're covered by the federal statutes, and yet we still experience discrimination here in the city of Houston. And we believe Houston is it's such a diverse place, it's such a welcoming place, there's so many things going right with Houston that there ought to be a mechanism to solve these problems across communities at the local level. And so while this ordinance is actually one that doesn't just cover the gay and transgender community, it, it provides for all of the federal protected classes as well as the gay and transgender community, it has been an opportunity to allow local solutions to address issues of discrimination across the broader spectrum. The ordinance went through a number of drafts before it ever saw the light of day. And uh, as, as much as I would like to say that I could that I'm a perfect drafter of ordinances and I talk to, to stakeholders and we put it out. Those darn council members always want to amend whatever I put out <laughs> in front of them. And so there were a number of, of amendments offered last week. But in the, the week since then, there's been a lot of really unfortunate misinformation and there's been some, a focus of concern on one piece of the ordinance. Well, we put that element of the ordinance in to, I guess, to reassure people. And that has to do with specifically uh, the transgender community and 
access to something so fundamental that for most of us who are working on the ordinance, we, we didn't think it would be controversial. We just wanted to explain. But it has become a flashpoint. And we kept trying to figure out different ways to explain why the wording was in the ordinance and explain what we meant and the, the epiphany we all had yesterday. Uh, and I, I want to thank the Greater Houston Partnership and uh, I want to thank Councilmember Jerry Davis who is going to be offering the, the, uh, another amendment uh, to uh, the, the ordinance that I propose. Uh, <coughs> human rights campaign, various groups across the community didn't come from the administration, it, it uh, came from outside, but there's a, an epiphany and like, well, if in trying to do the right thing and explain, and we kept trying to explain more and more, it's like, you know, sometimes your kids are explaining something to you and you just want to think, just stop talking, because you're just making it worse. Well, it was time to stop talking because we were making it worse. And so the solution is to remove that particular section of the ordinance. And uh, we, we have strong commitment on council and strong commitment across the community for the base ordinance. And uh, we have strong commitment on council, strong commitment ac across the community for some of the proposed amendments, including to uh, reduce the size of companies in a thoughtful and uh, careful manner uh, down to, uh, it would apply to companies of 15 employees and above but we will remove tomorrow, there will be a motion to remove a, the specific section uh, where we just got deeper and deeper into trying to explain things in terms of transgender access to bathrooms. You know, uh, we wouldn't be standing here today without a lot of folks who have been very engaged in the process. I want to give sincere thanks to everyone who's been involved and the fact that even through uh, two marathon, a public hearing, a marathon public session, I'm assuming they're gonna, there's going to be another marathon public session this afternoon. Houstonians have done what, what we, are, we take pride in. Uh, we've been civil, we've been thoughtful with each other, vehemently disagreed on some of the issues that have been raised, but it has been a remarkably uh, smooth and, and, and uh, careful process, and I want to thank everybody involved and encourage everybody to continue to, uh, to disagree as politely as possible and uh, to show the rest of the United States how to handle tough issues the Houston way and had a very productive conversation and have had productive conversations from the beginning with uh, the partnership, uh, both their chairman, uh, Paul Hobby, and their CEO, Bob Harvey. And I'm going to invite Bob Harvey to come forward. Sorry? Yep. Wrong side. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. As Mayor Parker just said, I'm Bob Harvey. I'm the president and CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership. And I'm here this morning to reiterate the support for the proposed Equal Rights Ordinance of the Greater Houston Partnership. You know, Houston is a remarkably diverse, welcoming, and inclusive city, and we at the Partnership believe an ordinance that codifies these principles of non-discrimination is entirely appropriate. We've worked closely with other business associations, with Mayor Parker, members of City Council, and others to help draft an ordinance that will be both effective and efficient, one that will neither require new staff at City Hall nor place an undue burden on the businesses of Houston while speaking clearly to the values of respect for all Houstonians. As you've already heard, last night a number of parties, including the partnership, agreed to support an amendment proposed by Councilmember Davis striking paragraph 1751B, the paragraph that relates to access to restrooms in similar facilities. We believe this change is an appropriate response to the concerns raised in the community regarding privacy and security. And I want to thank all of the business community, the community leaders, the religious community leaders, and others who have provided input on this issue over the last several weeks. So let me reiterate, Houston is a city that doesn't discriminate. We welcome all who want to live and work in Houston and help make this one of the world's truly great cities. The proposed Equal Rights Ordinance simply makes clear that business, businesses in Houston do not and will not discriminate. 
This ordinance is an appropriate step for the city at this time, and I encourage all members of council and the public at large to support this, um, this, this ordinance. Thank you very much. Uh, clearly, we have a number of uh, representatives of the clergy here standing with us and uh, many more who have signed letters of support. I want to give um, a particular regard to uh, the Reverend Bill Lawson, who has been at the forefront of, of civil rights efforts in, in Houston for, for many, many decades. Yeah. So. It's, uh, and so with so many members of the clergy here, it was hard to pick just one to speak, uh, but I am asking the Reverend Lisa Hunt, Rector of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, to come forward. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate your leadership in this effort. I stand today as a Houston faith leader to present a letter of support for the Equal Rights Ordinance, which has been signed by 70 leaders of congregations throughout the city of Houston. The moral fabric of our society is shaped not only by our personal spiritual practices, but also by the values embodied in the laws of our community. As clergy supporters of this ordinance, we come from a variety of religious traditions, yet we all support the dignity of every human being, which requires treating each and every member of our community fairly, equally, and with respect. The Equal Rights Ordinance seeks to extend these values to all the citizens of Houston without imposing one set of religious beliefs over those of others. I'm the rector of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in the Montrose. My support of this ordinance is an extension of the mission of our parish. St. Stephen's was the first church in the city to racially integrate our preschool. We were the first Episcopal congregation to call a woman to be the lead pastor. And just this past year, we've been the first Episcopal congregation in Houston to be allowed to bless same-sex couples. Our history is that as people experience change toward greater justice, there is more love and reconciliation in the community as a whole. Other clergy signed on to this letter for a variety of reasons. We all share a commitment that this ordinance acknowledges the fundamental value of protecting all Houstonians from discrimination and preserving religious liberty of congregations and religious organizations to believe and practice as they are led. Thank you. May I have my... Somebody. I think I know who's, who's, who's here, but just in, just in case. Um, we wouldn't be here at this, at this point uh, without uh, the very strong support, particularly of Councilmember Ellen Cohen. And in fact, if, if I hadn't been moving to, to uh, present such an ordinance, I think she would have been standing behind me, uh, pushing me. I also want to thank uh, Councilmember Mike Laster, who has uh, been strongly involved in, in moving this forward. I'm particularly gratified that in addition to the faith leaders who are here today, we have uh, some of our fellow elected officials. You know, it's not always easy for an elected official to weigh, on, weigh in on an issue that doesn't directly affect their elective body. Uh, we, we tend to want to say, okay, you know, go talk to the state or go talk to the county. Uh, Almost every one of uh, the elected officials that, that uh, I have talked to who actually represent the core of the city of Houston has said, yes, uh, we believe there's, there should be an equal rights ordinance. And uh, while there were several others who wanted to be here today and could not, I am particularly grateful that State Senator Rodney Ellis and State Representative Sylvester Turner are here. Uh, first, I'm going to ask uh, Senator Ellis to step forward. Thank you, uh, thank you. 
thank you uh, very much, Mayor. Uh, I'm very proud to be here in support uh, of this amendment. Uh, as it relates to this issue, Mayor, I am not only a student of history, I happen to have lived through this one. Because roughly 30 years ago, the Houston City Council put forth a very similar but not as expansive and not as good of an ordinance as you are putting forth today. Uh, I'm glad that I was on the right side of history then, and I'm going to be on the right side of history this go around. I, um, I, may I, I made three quick trips to New York last week. Three times because I wanted to get back to Houston as quick as I could. I did a bike ride, of course, with about 35,000 people from around the country last Sunday. All they wanted to talk about when they saw that Bike Texas jersey on my back was, will Houston join other great diverse cities on the globe in passing this ordinance? And I said yes. And then, Mayor, I, I went back with some prominent Houstonians for Innocence Project Gala, creme de la creme of New York, giving money to help us with criminal justice issues here. All they wanted to know was would we pass this ordinance? And then I went back with the Johnson family to watch that play all the way, as in LBJ. It's interesting that the first battle in terms of civil rights was the public accommodations, Rem Lawson, integrating simple things like golf courses, housing, and other issues. The Voting Rights Act had to come later, and might I add, after a few significant deaths for that issue to pass. Uh, I'm going to be on the right side of history because I think it's a fundamental right in this country and on this globe for people not to be discriminated against regardless of what they look like, where they come from, what challenges they may have in life, or who they decide to love. That's why I'm going to support this ordinance. And, uh, Mayor, the last point, that, last point I want to make is that if any group of Houstonians decide to exercise their right to take this issue to the ballot box so that the voters make the ultimate decision, unlike Rodney Ellis, who was heavier and had a lot more hair, but not as much wisdom, back in 1984 as I have in 2014. I'm going to be there fighting tooth and nail to make sure the voters of Texas, of Houston, understand what's at stake. And a great city with great leaders does not sit back and let people decide to turn against one another simply because of who they choose to love. Thank you, and I'm proud to support the Mayor and Council. Senator Ellis, it, um, while we are often called to cast tough votes, uh, none of us who will be voting tomorrow on this ordinance are facing what you had to face 30 years ago when this came up the first time. Absolutely. It was a, it was a courageous decision then. Uh, I would not want to follow that, but there is someone I know who probably can. State Representative Sylvester Turner. Let me, let me join uh, uh, with uh, Senator Ellis and all of the speakers of the mayor, the city council, the Greater Houston Partnership, all of the, the, dignit uh, the religious leaders and others who are standing here. I am honored to be a part of it. Um, mayor, in a few weeks, uh, the Civil Rights Game will be celebrated in this city uh, based on the struggles, the sacrifices that have taken place in Major League Baseball. It's not a, just a baseball story, it's an American study, a story. And right now, uh, this city is facing uh, its defining moment. And I think every now and then we have some defining moments. If I can borrow the words, uh, paraphrase a little bit from what Martin Luther King said years ago, he said that the character of a person, and I would include the character of, a, of the city, is defined not by where you stand in the moments of convenience and comfort, but where you stand in the moments of challenge and controversy. That's when the character of a person and the character of a city is established. I think we are in that moment right now. This is a <laughs> this is a great city. It can be a greater city. It's a diverse city. It's an inclusive city. It's a welcoming city. 
But you know, it's not just enough to say that. It needs to be seen in our laws. And so when people come through this city and when they live in this city, they can see what we have put on our books. I think this ordinance goes a long way in saying that we have come a long way and we still want to move forward. Like the rest, I join with you in supporting this ordinance to say that we must say no to discrimination in any shape, form, or fashion, that we are an inclusive city, that we want a great city, and we can join on this day in making it even better than what it is today. I support the ordinance, and I hope that the people of this city will join hands and support it as well. There have been a number of us standing here speaking for the broader community of Houston or for ourselves or for uh, our, our, our uh, organizations. Uh, I now invite to speak uh, the Houston Gay and Lesbian Political Caucus Chair uh, Maverick Welch, uh, who will speak on behalf of the GLBT community. Thank you, Mayor. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to take a minute and look behind me. Look at all the people that are behind me. We've got everybody from all walks of life up here fighting for this ordinance. And I think that that speaks to what a great city this is. We have a moral decision that happens tomorrow. Make no bones about it, this is about morality. What morality choice are we going to make? The choice that we're going to make tomorrow, and I am the eternal optimist, is that discrimination is wrong. That's a choice uh, that our elected officials, I am very confident, are going to make tomorrow. They're going to look at the rest of the city, and I think they're going to back up what the mayor's proposed. But I also want to thank everybody else involved in this process. Just look behind me. You'll see people from different walks of life people representing different organizations that have all negotiated this in good faith. I particularly want to thank Bob Harvey with the partnership. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Look at all the religious leaders we've got behind us. This is an exciting time in, in Houston. I used to be a history teacher, and right now, you're witnessing history. Thank you. All right. I know we could just stop now, but are there any questions from the media? Last week we heard some very emotional statements from people who came to speak to the city council. Some of them came from uh, transgender uh, people, and many of them may also focus on this bathroom issue. It's a big deal to some transgender people. Are you letting them down? Uh, we believe that uh, the solution that we have chosen is the best solution. As I said, we were, we were trying to do the right thing. We were trying to directly address the fears of uh, not, not folks in the business community, but folks in the broader community. Uh, and it was clear that the more we tried to address those fears, the bigger they got. And the, the base ordinance is still the same. It says that you can't discriminate. Uh, every business owner, and I was a retail business owner for uh, 10 years, every business owner has both the, the right and the responsibility of keeping their patrons safe and uh, making sure that uh, there's nothing disruptive that happens in that business. But at the same time, every business owner has the responsibility to make sure that they don't discriminate uh, against someone who is uh, patronizing their business and acting in, in a lawful fashion. And uh, we think that the laws are sufficient, the ordinance is sufficient, state law is sufficient to allow folks to sort through that without us having to, to spoon feed it to them. So that this is a, uh, truly it was a matter of just stop talking and, and do the right thing. And that's what we have decided to do, and that's why Councilmember Davis will be offering his uh, amendment tomorrow. Mayor, you have a long list of clergy uh, members and churches that are supporting uh, this proposed change and what you hope passes tomorrow. There are churches that are 
just like a Second Baptist, which is very large and powerful, some would say in this community, that over the weekend sent out uh, letters to its parishioners. Do you know if big churches like Second Baptist will be on board now? Or have you reached out to them? We have reached out to them. And do I expect them to be on board now? No. Uh, and you'll have to ask them why. But the kind of misinformation that was being spread and echoed prompted a lot more discussion about what we ought to put in this information. It is insulting and absurd to think that any one of us standing here would want to do anything that would want to, to make our children unsafe in a public place. That is just not something that any one of us would do. And, and if we have inadvertently created that impression, we believe that this change will take that away. Now, they may continue to say that, but that is not what this ordinance is about. Um, if it wasn't for your election, we probably wouldn't be talking about this ordinance now. But I want to know if the city of Houston, with the, with the help of David Feldman, um, has the wherewithal to enforce this ordinance to the letter of the law and according to the city of Houston's charter. What we did, as we do with all of our ordinances, we look at other cities and see what their experience is, if, if they have a, a similar ordinance. And uh, we believe that there will be a, you know, there'll be a little, little, little bump, and then it will taper off. Uh, based on the experience of other cities, we think we can handle it any uh, complaint process adequately with existing staff. We don't think it will be a burden on the city. And the fact that we are starting with uh, large companies, companies over 50 employees, uh, many of the largest companies in Houston employing thousands of employees already have very similar ordinances on their books. All of the, the, the majors have the, this, these kinds of uh, ordinances, uh, or policies, not ordinances, policies on their books. And uh, so, and it gives us time to work with the smaller companies to make sure that there's a comfort level there. So we think it'll, it'll be a smooth transition. Will there be a special task force? Correct. Mayor, don't, you, I, don't you like it when I just say yes? yes. Okay. Mayor, is there going to be a special task force? I, I have, a, I have, a, I have a, actually another event coming up, so I'm not trying to run out the door. But I, I'm, you're going to have me as a city target for a few hours this afternoon. So. Uh, is there going to be a special task force by the police department? T Tony, this is not a criminal process. This is a process where if someone feels that they have been discriminated against, they contact the Office of Inspector General within the city attorney's office, and there is a confidential investigation by the uh, Office of Inspector General. And the, the goal is to resolve the, the process. This does not involve the Houston Police Department uh, at all, and uh, it would not involve the criminal justice process at all unless all efforts at mediation fail, and it's clear that a, a business owner or business uh, deliberately was discriminating, and then there is an opportunity to go before a municipal court judge and sort it out so there is a day in court and a chance for all sides to speak their minds. Any other questions? Let me thank everybody who has been involved in this process. Uh, it is, it's great to be here t today with an ordinance that I think we can all be proud of and speaks well for the respect we have for each other here in the city of Houston. Thank you very much. All right.